Good morning and welcome to worship. You are worshiping with Christus Lutheran Church in Greenville, Wisconsin. I am Pastor Jen Christensen and the musician you were hearing is Bruce Kessner. So again, welcome to one and all and glad that you have joined in for worship today. This is the second Sunday in the season of Advent, and as part of our worship service, we will be lighting the candles on our Advent wreath. And so you might, if you haven't already, want to take a moment and get your Advent wreath or your four candles ready for that part, part of our worship time together. Also, a couple of notes from me. Uh, we are still looking for folks to help out with snow shoveling at the church building. Even though we're not gathering in the building, it's still important to keep those walkways clear and then we don't have the snow on snow on snow situation going. So there was a sign up that went out in our weekly email or you can also contact our ministries coordinator for more information about how to get involved with that. And to those of you who've already signed up, thank you for your volunteering. Also, we are hoping to decorate the exterior of the church building for the Advent and Christmas seasons. And so what we are in need most of are Christmas lights. And so if you have any working outdoor Christmas lights that you're not going to be using this year that you would like to loan to the church, uh, please contact me and let me know that you have those available. Otherwise, we do have a tote that is outside the church doors that we're collecting our luminary bags in. And so you can put that in there or around it and um, make sure you label it so that we are able to get your lights back to you at the end of the Christmas season. And then coming up on Sunday, December 27th, that is traditionally our lessons and carols worship service. And we'd like to make this year's extra special just because we're doing everything differently. We thought we'd give this a try. So what we're hoping for is we know that everybody has a favorite Christmas carol. And a lot of times the reason that it's a favorite is there's a story behind it. And so we want to hear those stories. And so you've been invited to take a short video of yourself saying, hi, my name is so-and-so and my favorite Christmas carol is this one and explaining why. You do not have to sing the carol for us unless you want to, but that is not required. We just want to hear your story so that we can kind of string them together and dot them through our service on the 27th. So more information again about that was in our weekly email, which also gets posted to our Facebook page. So you can look for that. It comes out on Fridays. And then lastly from me, we will be celebrating Holy Communion as part of our service today. And so if you haven't done so already, now might be a good time to gather up your communion supplies, your bread and wine or grape juice, and have that at the ready for when we reach that point in our worship service. And now we have an important financial update from our congregation president, Jeff Arps. Good morning and happy holidays, Christus family. This is Jeff Arps, your current council president, and I'd just like to take a few moments of your time to discuss a question that we've been getting from some members. Uh, that question is, is how we are doing for 2020 financially, you know, what's the books look like, which is which was a great question. Um, obviously, 2020 has been a hardship on many financially, individuals and businesses, as well as churches. Um, and so with this, I have some good news and some, I want to say bad news, but some cautionary news. So first, the good news. Good news is always good enough. 2020, uh, we are going to appear at least to look like to finish 2020 at break even. And I say appear because we don't have all the numbers in yet because the year's not over with. But we will come, if we don't break even, we'll become very close to breaking even, so, which is great. Um, breaking even after a year like this year, couldn't ask for anything more. So how do we do that? How do we break even with um, not meeting and not having our envelope giving? Uh, a couple different ways. First way, the council and the staff, especially the staff, has really looked at how can we cut expenses um, for the church, and they've done a fantastic job of saving expenses. The second way, and the bigger way, um, monetarily-wise at least, that we were able to do this is earlier this year, we were able to take care, uh, take care, take advantage of the government forgiveness loan program for small businesses and churches. Um, through this program, we were able to secure $39,800, let's call it $40,000, that the church could use for um, paying things like staffing and for the rent, or not rent, um, for the mortgage and things like that, essential things. So we were able to take advantage of that, which is fantastic. Um, that $40,000 really saved us. 
So if you do quick math, uh, if we did not have that loan, that uh, forgiveness program, we would be $40,000 in the hole, negative $40,000 ending the year, which would obviously not be very good for us. So that's good news. But the good news is 2020, we're going to end up breaking even. So that's good news. So here's the cautionary. I don't want to say, I don't want to say bad news, but cautionary news. 2021. Uh, 2021 is a big question mark. We don't know what 2021 is going to bring as far as COVID. We don't know when we are able to get together. Hopefully soon the vaccine will come out. Hopefully soon we will. But, you know, some people are still saying not until late 2021. Um, but we don't know yet. Um, you know, don't quote me on the day. We're not sure. Uh, and we don't know if the government's going to do a forgiveness loan program either, which is a big um, question mark for us as well. But it's all, all doom and gloom. You know, what can we do? Uh, what can we do as a church to make sure Christus is still moving forward and following our mission? Um, so I guess I would ask this holiday season just to keep Christus in mind. If you were a envelope giver regularly on Sundays, maybe consider doing electronic giving. Uh, we have electronic giving that come out every week automatically. Um, you can do one-time electronic giving. You can mail in checks. Uh, multiple different ways to make that happen. Um, if you have questions on any of those or concerns or anything like that, please feel free to reach out to myself or pastor or any other council members. But that's what we're really looking at. Um, we just want to make sure that don't forget about us. Don't forget about Christus. Just because we're not seeing each other's smiling faces every Sunday still means that we're still working, though. Um, the church is still functioning, and we still have bills to pay. So keep us in mind. Consider doing electronic giving. Um, obviously, that the loss that that $40,000 overcame was the lack of meeting on Sundays and lack of the envelope giving. So that's where the loss came from. So we have to look at different ways to overcome that this year. That's all I have. So just to recap, good news, 2020, we're going to end break even. That's fantastic. Good way to end of the year. 2021, a little cautionary, a little, we got to watch out. We got to make sure we change some things a little bit. Um, and we're asking that that we look at doing electronic giving instead of uh, the lack of the envelope giving for now to help the church out. Well, that's all I have. I hope everyone has a safe, happy holiday season. Um, enjoy, and uh, hopefully see each other again very, very soon. I will return you to your regular scheduled program with Pastor. Have a great day. Thank you, Jeff. With that, let us begin our worship. Longing for light, we wait in darkness. Longing for truth, we turn to you. Make us your own, your holy people. Today, 
Longing for shelter, many are homeless. Longing for warmth, many are cold. Break us your building, sheltering others, us made of living stone. Christ, be our light, shine in our hearts, shine through the dark. Now together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Jesus, who comes as new birth, we confess that we are held captive by sin. In spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free free from all that holds you back and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the lighting of the second candle of the Advent wreath. With voices rising, rising like incense, we pray to you in hope, our God. In you alone we hope. It is hard in these days to have hope, to invest in things we do not understand, to believe in things we have not experienced, to trust that all will be well. But you, O oh God, are a keeper of promises. You promised to create a nation, and you did. You promised a savior, and you dwelt among us. You promised forgiveness, and you give it. We grasp for you in hope. We await your return with expectation. We look to the renewal of all things with joy. We prepare for you through acts of love. We reach for you in hope, our God. We reach for you in hope, our God, your promise to be fulfilled. Two candles to watch for Messiah. Let the light vanish darkness. He shall feed the flock like a shepherd. Gently lead them home. Let us 
Let us pray. Stir up our hearts, Lord God, to prepare the way of your only Son. By his coming, strengthen us to serve you with purified lives, and give us courage to bring lasting peace to our world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our worship continues with our scripture readings. A reading from Isaiah. Comfort, O comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all peoples shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out. And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass, the grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them to his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. And now a reading from the first chapter of the Gospel of Luke. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now our worship continues with our children's sermon with Christine. Good morning, Christus friends. It's good to be with you this morning. So have any of you ever played a game of what's the opposite? This is where you say the word that is the opposite of whatever I say. So if I said, what's the opposite, opposite of what, you would say dry, right? So you all have played before. Good to know. So let's do a few more. If I say on, you all say right, off. If I say open, you say closed or shut, right? If I say hot, you say cold, right? Like it is outside. Okay. But what if I say warm? Hmm. What would you say? Cool? Okay. Okay. You're doing pretty well. So let's try some harder ones. If I say mean, you say, okay, kind, nice, good, good, good to hear that. If I say hungry, you say full, okay, yep, or fed, good job. If I say weak, you say strong, right, good job. If I say hurt, you might say not hurt. 
healed, healthy, right? Those are all good ones. You guys are very, very good at playing this game. Well, thanks for playing. So in today's scripture story, Mary, the soon to be mother of Jesus, sings a song about what God is going to do. And the song is sometimes called the Magnificent, which means magnifies. And the words in that song are basically saying that God wants us to do the opposite of the hurtful things that some people experience in this world. So the opposite of hurtful things some people experience in this world. So he wants us to bring peace, right? So this, for example, the song says that God wants the hungry to be filled up and he wants the weak to be strengthened and wants those who hurt to know God's mercy and healing. And by doing that, that's bringing God's peace to this world. And it's showing others the peace of Jesus Christ. So it sounds like a pretty good song, doesn't it? But here's the thing. God can't make that song come true all by God's self. We, all of us, have to choose to join in with God. And join in with what God wants for us. And to sing along with God and share this song with others. But to sing along, we have to know how the song goes, right? We have to know the tune and the lyrics of the song that God is inviting us to sing. And it just so happens that this is one of the main things that Jesus did. He helped all of us learn how to hear and sing along with God's song, right? So by reading and talking about these stories of Jesus, all of us can learn the same things that then Jesus went on to teach his disciples, including how we can live God's way, a way that is the opposite of hurting others, a way that brings peace, God's peace to all. And that's why Mary was so excited in singing about Jesus's birth in the scripture story for today, because of what baby Jesus was going to grow up and do. Baby Jesus was going to help others sing and share and live God's beautiful and good song to all the world, including with you, to you, and including me. All of us are part of God's world. And that's pretty, pretty awesome. So remember, remember to be God's peace to one another, to show God's peace with one another and to live out God's peace with one another. And that's the candle that we lit today. Peace, the candle of peace. So will you pray with me? Please repeat after me. Dear God, thank you for giving us the language of music. Give us peace and remind us we are not alone. We pray for peace in our home, in our community, and in our world. Help us to be peacemakers, singing a song of peace to the world. Amen. Thank you so much. Continue sharing God's peace with everyone. Bye. Thank you, Christine. Do not be afraid to bring peace. This is our theme for the second week in the season of Advent. Now at first blush, bringing peace seems like something we would naturally not be afraid of. Holding hope, last week's theme, that's one thing. I mean, hoping against hope, that brings with it a sense of a vulnerability. We can get our hopes raised high that a loved one is going to recover or that a job offer will come through or that our favorite team will somehow eke out a win over their rival. We can hold those hopes high only to have them dashed. Hope is powerful, 
but it can be a fearsome thing to take on. But peace, I mean, peace, doesn't, doesn't everybody want peace? I mean, doesn't everybody in their heart of hearts just want to get along? Maybe, but maybe not. And the peace that we are called to bring as followers of Jesus is more than just getting along. It's more than just everybody kind of stopping the squabbling for a moment to join hands and sing the fahu fore for a while. It feels like we have been content to seek out that kind of false peace for far too long. As long as no one's feathers are getting ruffled, as long as our lives aren't getting disrupted too much, then let's just keep on with what it is we've been doing. Never mind that there are people outside our doors who are clamoring for justice and who are clamoring to have their voices heard. I think about this past year, how in the midst of everything else that's been going on, our nation is actually inching toward greater racial reconciliation. But I also think of how every time our siblings of color have tried to bring these things forward, whether peaceably or otherwise, it's almost always met with responses like, now is not the time. Or couldn't they have find a different way to protest, one that I find less offensive? Or how can they say I'm privileged when I've had to fight for everything I have? We prefer the peace of letting the status quo go on so long as the status quo works in our favor and we don't have to see the ones for whom it doesn't. But that kind of peace is no peace at all. Kind of reminds me of way back, but before I was married, four kids, all that, it was just me and my dog, Augie. And I decided, hey, you know what we really need in our household? We need a cat. So enter Bam Bam. Now you may, you've probably met Bam Bam now. You may recall him from our pet blessing service or um, if you happen to be, uh, have liked our Facebook page, you may have seen the blooper video that we showed a while back of him helping me read the gospel by jumping up onto the altar. That's the Bam Bam. So at any rate, Augie got to go and meet Bam Bam at the shelter so we could make sure that they would reasonably get along with each other as much as a dog and a cat ever would and it all worked out and so Bam Bam got to come home. And I remember that that first night, that first night that Bam Bam was home, I was laying on the couch and with both of the pets, Bam Bam was kind of resting on my chest, Augie was down by my feet and none of us was moving. And I thought to myself, you know, if somebody came by and like peeked through the window, they would think, oh, what, those three are just having a lovely peaceful evening. Look at that, how cute. But let me tell you, there was no peace in that moment. All of us were tense, rigid, especially me, knowing that there were all these like claws and teeth nearby. We survived the moment, but again, what on the outside might have looked like peace really wasn't. We are not called to bring that kind of peace. We are not called to bring peace that isn't really peace underneath. The peace that we are called to usher in, the peace that passes all understanding, goes beyond just a sense of calm or a simple detente or getting along for the sake of not making waves, even though people may be suffering as a result. It's the peace that Mary sings about in this week's Gospel reading. That peace, while ultimately beautiful and life-giving, is one that could be frightening to bring about the Lord's mighty arm showing its strength, the thoughts of the proud scattered, the powerful coming down from their thrones, that kind of peace is often hard fought and difficult to find. It is the peace that is far, far beyond a mere absence of conflict. It's a peace that results in everybody landing, living on a level playing field, where the proud and the lowly dine together, not just for one night in some kind of feel-good display of fake unity, but every night, every meal, every day. It's a peace that results not in the powerful simply getting dragged out of their thrones only so the powerless can, can take their place and repeat the same desperate cycle. Rather, it's a peace that involves, as Mary's song goes, the powerful giving up some of their power 
resulting in the raising up of the lowly and everyone in the end having exactly what they need. That kind of peace, to bring that in, would require courage and, and stamina and a whole lot more. And in the end, truly, that kind of peace required the death of one, Mary's son, in fact, for the sake of the whole world. Do not be afraid to bring peace. Mary, for all the beauty of this powerful song, she had every reason, every reason to be afraid of the peace of which she sang. There was cause for concern on a personal level, knowing that God's call could threaten her pending marriage to Joseph, her standing in the community, even her very life, if Joseph chose to accuse her of unfaithfulness. There was a cause for concern on a communal level too. Mary lived in occupied territory and the peace that the Romans brought with them was again a peace that is no peace. Nobody dared to cause trouble, not because everything was great and everybody loved what was happening, but because causing any kind of fuss meant almost certain death. And yet, and yet still she sang this subversive, courageous, joyful, longing for peace song. Still she lifted her voice to magnify the Lord, to marvel over her, plan, her place in God's plan of salvation. Still she sang of a world not yet to come. Note that her verbs are all in the past tense, not the future tense. So she sang of a world that wasn't like still far off, but of a world that God had already made happen, is making happen, even as the words are leaving her mouth. Do not be afraid to bring peace. The peace that we are called to work for and to seek out is indeed the peace that passes all understanding. But it is a noisy peace. It is a disruptive peace. It is a peace that gets up in our faces and demands our attention. A peace that can sometimes be uncomfortable. And yet, it is the peace that Jesus, our Savior, came to bring. The peace between God and humankind, and between humankind and humankind. Mary, she can sing the song that she sings because she trusts and believes that the God who helped his servant Israel and who kept his promises to Abraham and Sarah and Isaac and Rebekah and Ruth and Boaz and David and Isaiah and Ezekiel and all the rest, all of her other forebears in faith, Mary can sing the song she sings because she trusts and believes that the God who has been faithful in the past will be faithful in the present and on into the future too. She sings that song because of that and so may we, you and I, tentative peacemakers that we may be. We too can join this song of hope, peace, joy, and love. We too can raise our voices along with Mary because we too trust and believe that God in Christ Jesus is with us. God in Christ Jesus is with us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, the Lord is with us in our efforts to bring peace to our homes, to our community, to our world. The Lord is with us, fighting the good fight, encouraging us to listen to those who cry out for justice, to feed those who are hungry, and to call on the powerful to work for the common good. Do not be afraid to bring peace. The Mighty One has done great things for Mary and for all of humankind. Holy is his name indeed.
as the mighty from the north, and he has lifted up the lowly. He fills the hungry with good things, while others turn away. He comes to all who seek his love. to his son, God the Savior, and to the spirit of life and truth that burns within our hearts. Just as it was it is today, and it shall last through all tomorrow. And so my soul Let us now give expression to our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our service continues with our offering and anthem. Once again, I'd like to thank all of you for your continued support of the mission and ministry here at Christus. You are able to contribute by going to the donate button on the Christus website, or you can also mail your donations to the church. So again, thank you all for your kind and generous support of the work we are accomplishing together. And now our anthem, I've got Peace Like a River, played by Logan Peterson on the trumpet. Awesome. Thank you, Logan, and happy birthday. We'll continue now with the prayers of the people. Mm -hmm. 
God of power and might, comfort your people and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. Faithful God, you teach us to wait for you with faithfulness and patience. Sustain and support us in our doubts and questions. Nurture our faith as we discern and enact your mission. Loving God, you set the stars in the sky and breathe life into the earth. Renew the face of creation where it is in need of your healing touch. Mend the wounds of environmental damage and restore balance to ecosystems so that all creation can declare your praise. Steadfast God, you never tire of seeking justice. Where people suffer from discrimination, judgment, and injustice, speak words of truth and comfort. Inspire us to bring peace and lead us toward a world where faithfulness will sprout underfoot and righteousness rain down from above. Leading God, you ask us to make uneven ground smooth, even out the disparities between your people, sustain and support people with physical and intellectual disabilities, accompany disability advocates who work for a world accessible to all. Teach us to celebrate the great diversity in our midst. Tender God, you know sorrow and joy alike. We pray for those in our families and congregation who are not able to be joyful in this holiday season. Comfort those who grieve, be a companion to all who are lonely, tend those who are sick or struggling, and watch over those we name before you now. Jeff and Janet, Katie and Kyle, Leah and Brandon, Howard, Matt and Becky, Audrey, Pete and Nancy, Ward and Beth, Luis and his extended family, Trina, Verna, Lindsay and family, Kristen, Al, Helen and Kathy, Andy, Megan, Lori, Emily, Rochelle, Daryl, Dorothy, Howard, Brett's family, Riley's family, Dawn, Mike, Muffin, all those who are suffering from COVID-19, and all those we name before you now. God, please gather all people into your healing embrace. And now draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. Amen. Our worship continues as we celebrate Holy Communion. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, and it's given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, Take and drink. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, and it is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now let us join together in praying our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Please share communion with one another using these words. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you.
Now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's needs. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now the creator of the stars bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior fill you with love. The unexpected spirits guide your journey now and forever. Amen. worship with Christus anytime and Sunday school kids we're back on get ready to zoom see you next week